So we're prepping the transfer case to put it back in the car. There's two things you really want to pay attention before you put this thing in. Number one, make sure that this O-ring is still installed and it looks like it's in good shape. If it has any cracks or any tears or anything, you want to replace it because I'm not sure what goes through here, but I'm pretty sure oil flows through there and that's going to cause leaking issues. Same thing with this O-ring. Now I can see where somebody had got kind of aggressive trying to get this transfer case off. They probably didn't know what they were doing. I kind of cleaned it up with the jeweler file as much as I could. I don't have the money right now to replace all this stuff and I feel like it was working okay while it was in the car before. So I just cleaned it up the best I could. I mean, if we have problems down the road, then we'll deal with it then. But for now, you just want to make sure that this O-ring's in good shape. And when you're putting this in, you may have to rotate the shaft a little bit by grabbing the other side. That should spin it. Oh, no it doesn't. So you may have to pull this back down and rotate that a little bit. I'm not really sure how to get that. Uh, I'll let you guys know. Um, I am gonna probably just try to manhandle this thing in there. I'm a pretty big guy, so I feel like I could probably get it. Uh, I totally understand like if you have a transmission jack or a regular jack, I would use that, but I don't think I have a jack that goes high enough. When I took it out of the car, I just kind of pulled it out myself. So I'll let you know how it goes. I don't know if I'll get that on film. So uh, yeah, I really have, I have nothing else, but other than be careful. So just make sure these O-rings are still intact, guys, or you'll have problems later. Better to fix it now while it's out of the car than later on. All right, real quick, guys, before we get started, I want to show you this. I noticed this right after I just got done showing you the O-rings. Uh, it looks like there's a, an area where there's not a tooth there and basically it's meant to mate up against the, the transmission inside of the car. You can see the shaft on the car has the same kind of line. So what I did was I just rotated that to the bottom. I can't really show you, but there's actually two. There's one on the bottom that I rotated down and then there was one on top and the transmission has basically the same thing going on. So. We'll try to use those to line it up. Let's see how it goes. So I was successful in getting the transfer case in. I actually didn't get it on video because I am by myself today. But the technique I used was I basically just put it on my chest and bench pressed it up in there. Um, if you can do that, great. But you could also use a jack to help you get it in there. But honestly, I would just recommend having a friend. I didn't have that today. Um, I just did it myself. I'm a pretty big guy, so you know I just pushed it up in there. Lining up the splines worked. So the main thing to remember is the bolts are 51 foot pounds, all six bolts. And then you have, if you have an ACD transfer case, you can't really see it, but there's a line, a uh, brass bolt with two washers that go on each side to hook your ACD line back up. That is 31 foot pounds. So once you get that in there, you should be good to go. Uh, pretty close to getting the steering rack back in. Uh, I'm just going to probably fill up the oil on the transmission quick and double check and make sure there's nothing else we have to put in there. But that's pretty much it, guys. I don't I don't really have anything special or good to put that trans transfer case back in. I mean, however you can get it in there without dropping it or breaking it or damaging it. I mean, that's, that's the best way at the end of the day. So we got our drive shaft assembly out of the shed and things you want to remember we put those two marks on so when you go to put this back on you want to make sure that those marks line up with the ones on the car uh, the shaft up here the book tells you to specifically put gear oil on the outside and the inside it helps with lubrication while you're putting it on uh, these bolts the nuts back here they get tightened down to 24 foot pounds so go ahead and throw that back in i'm not gonna put that on camera you know you guys this is Pretty self-explanatory, easy stuff. I got the steering rack out, ready to put it back in. I'm trying to decide on how I'm gonna put this in myself. Uh, probably be best if you had two people again, obviously, but I have two floor jacks, and I think what I'm gonna do is put a four x four on each side underneath of the jack pad into right up against the each side and just kind of pump it up slowly between the two jacks so it raises evenly. And we gotta put that steering shaft back in. Uh, try to keep your wheel straight, obviously. You don't wanna have to, you're gonna have to do alignment anyways, but you don't want it to be like pulling one way or the other as much as possible. So just take your time. We'll see how the two jack method works. I'll try to record it if I can. 
If not, I'll let you know how it goes. So I've got the jacks out here, I'm trying to line everything up. Remember, you got these bolts that come out of the frame right here. So what I did was try to line that hole up with that bolt as best as I can. And then now I'm going to put the jacks underneath and hopefully I can jack them up fairly evenly without dropping the cross member. We'll see how it goes. Also, we gotta try to finagle the steering uh, drive shaft or whatever it's called back into its hole. And there's, we gotta go inside of the car underneath the pedals to tighten that up. So a lot of things going on right now. Let's see how it goes. So here's what we got guys. Here's the two jack system. As you can see, maybe a little hard to see, I started putting the, the rod, the steering rod back up inside. I'll go check the steering wheel and make sure it's straight, but I'm just gonna slowly put these jacks up together at the same time. Hopefully it just kind of lands in place. Just take my time with this, whether it takes 10 minutes or an hour, it doesn't matter as long as the, it goes back together. All right, I don't know how well you can see that, but we're about halfway through. So far so good. Just kind of doing the right side a little bit and then I, uh, while holding the steering shaft and trying to guide that through the hole. And then I'll come back out and pump the left side up a little bit, just to even it out. So we're at the point now where we're gonna hook this drain line back up and that goes right in there. Don't forget to hang, or hook that up before you raise it up too high because it'll be too difficult. Also, you have your supply line that you need to run back up between, behind the intake manifold. I just set it here for now. We'll hook it up later, but just don't forget about those two lines. You need to hook those up for the power steering to work correctly. So the cross member is pretty much back in. You have, just remember, oh, sorry about that. Just remember you have this big nut right here. You have a big bolt right here. And then there's a smaller bolt right next to that big bolt. You wanna get all those started, put some never seize on them. And then the big nut and the big bolt get tightened down to 123 foot-pounds. And then this bolt right here gets tightened down to 37 foot-pounds. And after you get that, don't forget. So you have this engine mount in the back here. And before I forget, that's 34 foot-pounds. But what I did to get it in there is I took a taper punch and the engine was kind of leaning towards the back a little bit, like the whole thing was leaning this way. So what I did was I just put my hand here I pushed down on the whole engine and when those holes got close, I took the taper punch, slid it in there and then I got my bolt and slid it from the backside in. Now, the drawing shows the bolt being in the other direction, but I know that I'll probably have this engine back out in the future. So it's just easier to get to the nut and knock the bolt out and catch it than it is to try to torque the bolt down on the other side. Obviously, it's a tight area and it's hard to get a torque wrench on there, but I know I'm kind of flying through this. Uh, it's not kind of, the videos are not gonna be kind of like when we took the car apart uh, because it's pretty much just reassembly and I know you guys are really smart and a lot of stuff you can figure out on your own. I'll make sure you get the torque values, but I'm really just trying to get this car back on the road and it takes a long time to set up the cameras to do every little tiny detail. So the very important stuff, I'll make sure I show you guys. If you guys have any questions, just hit me up anytime. Not a problem at all.